Blizzard just released a new Pandaria book like three days ago, covering every single zone and giving us pretty big updates on what happened to the continent since we left back in MOP and what it's like today. Most importantly, the Mantid are back to worshipping Yashiraj, probably preparing for their next offensive. The wall has been fully repaired, the Peak of Serenity has been abandoned, the Isle of Thunder is actually used to forge weapons to defend Azeroth by both factions, these Mogul statues are repaired, a bunch of Horn Lion settlements have either been discarded dead or are now neutral and most importantly there is a hint that Lily is sailing on a new expedition which could be a huge hint for 11.0. These are just some of the huge updates so what is all this new information that we have to the continent of Pandelia? I've been using this mod for nearly three months now and it is amazing. Cash goes in here, cards go like this, and you even got this little tracker that you can find your wallet if you lose it through the app. There's so many styles you can choose from. You got premium leather, you got carbon fiber, aluminum, and they also have key cases that can also be fitted with the tracker so that you don't lose your keys as well. Best of all, these wallets are super affordable and they're even more affordable if you use my code DORON and you can get up to 25% off your wallets or key cases. So check out Exter. I can actually made pretty much this exact video nearly a year back and at the time most of it was kind of pieced together from quest text, NPC conversations, speculations across the years that we had gotten, but now Blizzard has released a brand new book called Exploring Azeroth Pandaria, giving us a complete update to Pandaria up to the current date. It isn't 100% certain what the date is, but let's just say it is the most official and up to date information that we currently have on Pandaria as it has been over 10 years since we had visited the continent, but it is at least the time of the Dragon Isles since Atasca travels from the Dragon Isles to Pandaria. Overall, the information is not exactly like mind-boggling, I mean Pandaria hasn't completely changed, but we do have some really interesting plot points and conclusions to storylines you might remember that you might have actually played through a decade ago, so let's start off with all the info. First things first, we've actually been to Pandaria on two occasions, as there was a pretty significant Burning Legion invasion, and there was also some old god influence there lately as well and some of those consequences are here up to this day some areas have been completely restored they were destroyed in these invasions some are completely abandoned and no longer really exist so starting off with a uh, crassering wilds we discover a taskar here that sailed from the dragon isles to pederia as a jungle it is still dangerous up to this day but nowhere near what it was back in the day when pederia was in the midst of chaos we know that the mination point the horde base is now friendly to both factions we know that the sentinel base camp the night elven outpost has been abandoned completely and has now just kind of returned back to nature however the torrent on the other hand of the thunder cleft settlement remain here up to this day and they have been healing the lands ever since when it comes to jade forest all of you guys know it from that famous cinematic the ganoshar point the major horde landing site has been completely dismantled and is no longer there we also know that the famous statue that was destroyed by the horde in the alliance war is still not actually been restored. The restoration work is in process but as far as we know it is several years away from actually being completed so it is still quite a bit of work in progress. The ruins of the Terrace of Ten Thunders are peaceful and the Saurok of the Windward Isles have been driven away. In regards to the time of Sile we don't really have all that much info but we know that Ordos is apparently still alive so we have not actually defeated him. Now Dreadweights have in my opinion the most interesting new information and some possible foreshadowing as well. Most importantly the Manted are still a thing and they're worshipping Yashiraj, which as I said, I think is a pretty big hint for the next one expansion as we have all this old god info foreshadowed. We know that they have certainly calmed down, they're still dangerous, but the wall hasn't been attacked in a large force in a long time. The damage section of the wall has been completely fixed as well as that gate. Since the defeat of the Shah, most of the corruption has retreated and while some of the trees have been saved, a lot of the Manta trees are still just skeletons and completely ruined, so the corruption isn't completely gone. However, in my opinion, this team like a hint that the Mantid are worshipping Galchiraj and just building up power and it is only a matter of time before they get recruited back for a new offensive. Especially since the recent lore implications show that old gods can't really be killed so Yasharaj might actually be returning. But regardless, right next we have the town log steps and we have a bunch of updates to this zone as well. The Yongle continue to rule the zone and while we no longer are at open war with him, 
everyone is wary of their presence. The logging outpost is still used by the Shadow Pan to monitor the Yongol. The Mantid are still present in the zone, but mainly quiet and not as aggressive. But overall, the Yongol still remain as pretty dangerous enemies. On the other hand, we have the most dangerous zone of the continent, the Dark Isle of Thunder. And it is a lot calmer than it was in the past. I mean, first of all, does not allow and the Mogul have been defeated, of course. But despite no enemies, the Kirintor and the Sun Reavers still maintain a pretty significant presence, albeit with a truce, and their conflict has kind of turned into friendly competition. The Thunderforge is used by both factions to create weapons for the overall defense of Azeroth for both the arsenal of the Horde and the Alliance. Next down the line, we have some really interesting things with the Kunlai Summit. After the Siege of Orgrimmar, the monks and the brewmasters of Pandaria led a pretty big charge into the zone to completely drive out the Yongol out of this territory, and they have now been contained mainly to the town long steps. And as far as we know, the lands have significantly healed since then, with many farmers returning back to their homes. The Gate of the August Celestials is closed, and as you may know, the Peak of Serenity has been destroyed a few years back in the Burning Legion invasion, and now, as far as we know, it has been completely abandoned, there hasn't been any restoration efforts or any indications that it might happen soon. Near the shore, the Zandalari have been removed obviously, but we know that the remains of the invasion can still be found everywhere, the scars on the, are still on the land, and we learned that a new brewery has been constructed back where the Zandalari maintained their presence. The Path of Conquerors is still haunted by the unquiet spirits. Now, the most iconic zone, the Whale of Eternal Blossoms, so the entire zone has healed significantly, but it is said that it will never return back to its former glory after all the damage that has been done to it. However, the Golden Pagoda has been completely rebuilt to look exactly like it did in the past, and also the most notable two Mogu statues have been completely repaired as the most iconic signs of the zone. The Shrine of Two Moons and the Shrine of Seven Stars, the former Horn Alliance hubs, are still active to this day, albeit, of course, the factions don't maintain the same presence, but many travelers visit them. Additionally, the Mogu Shrine Palace retains a significant Shadow Pen presence in the case the Mogu ever decide to return in large numbers. The Lore Walkers have been quite quite active, staying in touch with the Explorers League, Kirin Tor, and they're very eager to connect with the wider world. Next on the line, we have, of course, the Pandarian Starter Zone, the Wandering Isles. Not all that much has actually happened. We know that the wound on the Giant Turtle has long since healed, and that the Temple of the Five Dawns is quieter now than it was back during Legion, and the monks have mainly returned back to their home temples. The Valley of the Four Winds has also seen some pretty big changes. The Storm Star Brewery has been set right, the Storm Foundations of the Imperial Granary still remain damage from the fell invasion, so the attack is still apparent. Additionally, the pools of purity have been restored completely to the pre-Legion invasion because, as you may remember, the Legion attempted to desecrate them. Overall though, the Horde and the Alliance presence still remains, although as a symbolic amount across the continent, sort of similar to Northern with a skeleton crew to maintain the presence. The downscale of the forces is of course, logical. I mean, we're dealing with other things. And also, you can notice this because a lot of the bases have closed down due to being hard and probably expensive to maintain. Pandaren have across the years connected with more of the rest of the world, and Pandaria has also significantly opened up to trade as, of course, the continent is much more peaceful. Interesting enough, though, despite us calming down everything, the kind of lying threat still exists. I mean, it's not exactly all just rainbows and sunshine. Not only are the Yongols still a pretty big threat, but a lot of this book reads as foreshadowing shadowing that the Mantid may become trouble soon, and additionally, with all the recent information and the presence of Titan facilities on Pedaria, I'm expecting we could be returning to the continent quite soon. Overall though, the book itself is really nothing all that crazy, it foreshadows Lily going to an expedition, which could indicate the new continent we could potentially be seeing in 11.0, however, most of these updates are minor and very few are actually just groundbreaking. This was really just a way to immerse yourself in Pedaria's storyline back again, but let's see, most of the predictions I made for the continent in the previous video on this topic are pretty much still spot on. Thank you for watching, check out these three new allied races that actually have evidence to be added soon and check out my video on ancient Greek colonies in Spain by also clicking on the screen as well. See you next time.